Do you think it's okay to teach six-year-olds that America is built on a pyramid of hate? Well, that's what the Philadelphia public schools have been doing since the George Floyd verdict. And that just happened. Here's a scoop from Chris Rufo, who's always got the scoops for us. Tragedy is a political weapon. Philadelphia Public Schools teaches that Chauvin verdict represents America's pyramid of hate. Now, let's back up a minute before I get into this. There's a reason the prosecution in this case never once mentioned race. If you didn't watch the trial, you might not know that. If all you did was consume mainstream media, look at social media, or listen to pundits or celebrities, you would think that Chauvin was on trial for a hate crime, not just for murdering George Floyd. And the fact of the matter is race wasn't mentioned because race had no part in this. Race wasn't part of it. There was no evidence whatsoever that had anything to do with race. And yet from the beginning, this has been white cop, black man. This has been the the case that has been given to us as the reason for all of this sudden push towards anti-racism, critical race theory, et cetera. Of course, we, we who've been watching education for the last 25 or 30 years know that this was coming. I mean, this, this has been inching forward towards this logical conclusion, actually illogical conclusion, since, you know, I was in college. But this really came to the fore after George Floyd. And as I said, the bizarre thing about that is race played no role in this other than the simple fact that George Floyd was black and Derek Chauvin is white. That's it. That's literally the beginning, middle, and end of it. So let's take a look at this piece and see the horrific things that the Philadelphia Public Schools did within hours. I mean, they actually, if you think about it, had to have had this ready to go, which is even creepier. Okay. Scoop. The day after the Chauvin verdict, Philadelphia Public Schools teaches kindergartners that George Floyd was killed by a police officer, six-year-olds, and that America is built on a pyramid of hate culminating in genocide. Genocide. There's a genocide going on right now in China. Right now. The Uyghur people are in concentration camps and you've got Disney and the NBA doing business with them. People like LeBron James, who was full of commentary about our police, apparently has nothing to say about the actual genocide that's currently going on. But let's continue. The lesson plan produced by Philadelphia's Office of School Climate well, climate and culture, instructs kindergarten through second grade teachers to encourage students to discuss what happened to George Floyd and the goals of the Black Lives Matter movement. Why? No, really, why? Why is Philadelphia's Office of School Climate and Culture, now if you think about school climate, you want the school climate to be one in which kids feel safe and comfortable learning and feel comfortable with their peers and aren't afraid all the time, aren't angry all the time, aren't feeling negative emotions all the time. Why would you want to encourage kindergarten through second grade? So we've now got six through eight-year-olds. Why? Why this age group? To discuss what happened to George Floyd and the goals of Black Lives Matter movement. Well, the goals of Black Lives Matter movement are to destroy the nuclear family, destroy capitalism, and turn the United States into a communist country. They're fairly explicit about it. They also want to defund the police, so there are no more police. Should six or eight-year-olds be having this conversation? Does this seem appropriate to you to discuss the goals of Black Lives Matter movement? because those are their goals. The teachers are told to share a social story presenting the case in racial terms. George Floyd was killed by a police officer. Mr. Floyd was African-American. The officer was white. Had literally nothing to do with it. Nothing whatsoever. The lesson teaches that for years, some police officers have hurt African-Americans. Yes, some police officers have hurt some African-Americans and 
some white people and some Hispanic people and some Asian people and some police officers have hurt people of every race. It's not specific to African-Americans. If we're talking recent history, if you're going to go all the way back, that's a whole separate lesson. But if you're trying to keep it current, go look at the stats. It doesn't support your narrative. Finally, the teachers are asked to discuss the pyramid of hate. How this has anything to do with this case, I do not know because, again, for the third time, this case had nothing to do with race. Despite everything you've seen to the contrary, literally nothing to do with race. You can say all you want that because he was black and he died and because the cop was white, that right there is evidence of racism. I realize that critical race theory teaches us that impact is more important than intent, that it, you don't have to actually kill someone because they're black. You just have to be black and you just have to be white, that it is de facto racism if you kill them. So that's why this is about race, but they're not going to tell the kids that. They're going to talk about something called a pyramid of hate. So they're not even presenting it in the framework of critical race theory, because if they were, they would be telling these kids, anytime someone black is killed by anybody who's white, it's because they're racist. No, they're going to start off with this pyramid of hate. They're going to come at it through the back door. They're going to have the kids form that conclusion all by themselves without explicitly lying to them the way they do with us. Probably because they know that small children won't grasp that, not just because they're pre-rational, but because small children don't hate people just because of the color of their skin. That has to be taught. Contrary to what the critical theorist would have you believe that it's in our DNA and our melanin content, that's actually taught. Anyway, so as I reported earlier this year, Philadelphia schools have adopted a radical curriculum encouraging children to glorify black communism and simulate black power rallies. Meanwhile, in some schools, 87% of students fail to achieve basic literacy. As I said in my welcome to the channel video, it is much easier to manipulate people if they cannot read. There was an entire period in history called Middle Ages, Dark Ages, etc., where you had very few people reading. The only people who could read were clergy. And so, well, you know, you can figure the rest out. According to the leaked documents, the Chauvin teaching materials were distributed by the school district's social and emotional learning team. Mm -hmm. This is really irritating because you see social and emotional learning used to be something that was relatively benign. And the idea behind it was that, you know, kids are going to learn better if they are supported socially and emotionally and so forth. We, you know, su support them in that way. They are twisting the meaning of social emotional learning to talk about we're going to tap into their emotions. We're going to manipulate their emotions and their desire to fit in socially to indoctrinate them in the things we want them to believe. So it's a complete bastardization is the only word I can think of, of what social emotional learning is led by Jamie Piotrowitz and Lauren Thomas. This is, these are the original source documents. Wait until you see these. Now I've scrolled ahead already. I'm going to go backwards to show you from the beginning. State versus Derek Chauvin community meeting plans K through 12. At least this goes K through 12, not just K through second. Before you begin talking with your students about the murder of George Floyd through the Minneapolis State versus Derek Chauvin trial, you must mentally, emotionally, and physically prepare yourself. You do not have to, nor are you expected to have all the answers as an educator. They're kind of hoping you don't. The best role for you in supporting your students is as a consistent and caring facilitator. Emotional manipulator is what that's code for. Click each of these links, which contain resources regarding race and racism, talking with students and youth, and the court records for the case. Do you understand that we're talking about kids, K through 12, who do not understand due process. They don't, they haven't read the constitution yet until they're at least in, let's say, 11th grade. So they don't even understand your basic civil rights. They don't understand the bill of rights. They don't, they don't understand any of this. They certainly don't understand due process. They don't understand how the justice system works. They don't understand why, for example, would this horrible bad man who's participating in the pyramid of hate, why would he even get to defend himself? It was on video. Why aren't they just putting him straight into the, into the, you know, the, the lethal injection chair? Why don't we just do that? They don't understand. 
They don't, trial documents, I know adults who don't understand how a trial works, a criminal trial, what, what, what jury instructions mean and do. We've seen them. Maxine Waters is a member of Congress, clearly doesn't understand due process, and she's an elected representative of the United States. She took an oath on the U.S. Constitution and she obviously doesn't understand, or maybe she does and she just counts on you not understanding. But I can assure you K through 12 students do not understand. The, these kids don't have basic literacy in many cases. 10 ways to talk to students about sensitive issues in the news. Nice white parents, podcast episodes and discussion guide. K through 12, nice white parents. How to talk to children, Derek Chauvin trial. How about don't? How about don't until they understand what a trial is? How the, until they understand the different degrees of murder? There are people going on Twitter going, it should have been this degree murder. No, I don't think it should have been that. Well, you know, third degree murder means you, you murdered more than three people. I mean, there are people literally who think these things. They don't even understand what the charges mean. And you're going to approach these kids. I guarantee you the teachers don't understand what's going on. Engaging young people in conversations about race and racism, racism had no role to play in this case. State of Minnesota versus Derek Chauvin, court records. Again, court records. Most adults don't know how to read them intelligently. Below you will find lesson plans to be used as community meetings, blah, blah, blah. Let's take a look, shall we, for K through second grade. Ask students if and what they know about George Floyd. How about if they say they don't know anything or just what they saw on TV, you just stop right there. How about that? If what they know about the news regarding Derek Chauvin's trial, how they are feeling, and if they have anything they want to share about their feelings, implication you should, because all it takes is one person to say, I have feelings, and everyone else is going to go, uh, okay, me too. I mean, there's pressure. There's peer pressure. Show students this slide deck, social story for George Floyd. We'll look, take a look at that in a minute. Allow students several minutes to process the information and draw a picture, write, or record themselves talking about their feelings. Because again, we want to make sure that children know and, and, and that we t talk to them as often as possible about how nothing matters more than their feelings about sensitive topics in the news that they understand nothing about and know nothing about. But you should emote at every chance you get. Emotion is the most important thing that you could ever express. And get this, students do not owe us an explanation for their trauma. They haven't been traumatized. They weren't there. It didn't happen to them. This is Philadelphia. That is Minneapolis. You are not traumatized by something that happened to somebody, you know, half a country away that you don't really know anything about if your parents are decent at all and you're in your six through eight. They don't owe you anything about their trauma? If they have trauma, you owe them a shrink. If you'd like to prompt students to take action, read this post before you decide on a project or purpose. Here are some actions you may suggest. Talk with others about what happened to your, talk with other ignorant students, K through second grade, and the goals of the Black Lives Matter movement by sharing information on social media. These are kids who aren't allowed to be on social media. What? Share with others on social media. They're six through eight. Parents, are you are you paying attention? Granted, this is Philadelphia, but this is coming to a school near you. Learn more about bias and talk together about how our biases may show up, especially in the lower levels of the pyramid of hate. Write a letter to your school or community newspaper about your thoughts and feelings. I don't know what thoughts you have. Are they going to be thoughts about your feelings? Because you really don't know anything yet. Get involved in local activism. They are six, seven, and eight. Third through fifth grade. I can't, what's more than get involved with local activism? Conduct a read aloud or share a reading of the following summary. On May 25th, 2020, George Floyd, an African-American man, was killed while being arrested by the police. A bystander video recording of the incident showed that a white police officer, again, nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it other than if you want to have a conversation about the way media distorts things and have it be relevant in that respect. Yes, but again, they are now eight through ten. And on it goes. I will link to this in the description box. I'm not going to go through every last little thing because we will be here all night and I will end up nauseated and not able to sleep. But I do want to skip ahead. I do. There's videos. All It's just horrific. Social story for George Floyd. This is for the six or eight-year-olds. People are angry and sad. Implication, you should be too because people are. People. Not some people. People. They're angry and sad. 
in our cities and our country. I have to tell you, I'm angry, but not for the same reason they think I should be. I'm sad, but not for the same reason they think I should be. And to the extent I was angry and sad about what happened specifically to George Floyd, the tragedy of it is, I'm not anymore. Not that I'm glad that it happened to him, but I'm numb. I'm numb. I've actually kind of ceased to care because they have so drummed the false narrative. They they have used this for political purposes, for political gain, to harm thousand, countless thousands of children, to damage education further than has already been damaged, to damage race relations in this country. And I've gotten to the point now where whatever the facts of this, I mean, I'm, I'm glad Chauvin was convicted. Okay. I'll admit it. I'm glad. I think he, I think he deserves to be convicted, but I don't care the way they want me to care. It didn't happen to me. I wasn't there. I'm not related to him. And if that sounds cold, I'm sorry, but that's reality. I have a life to lead. I have children to raise. I have my own things to do. I cannot stop living and get mired down in emotions for an entire year over somebody I didn't know. I can observe it. I can comment on it. I can say that's a very sad situation. I hope he, his family gets justice. I hope the police officer gets justice. I hope they take a look at some real police reform and better training and punish people before it comes to this if they have a habit of being abusive to people in their custody. But beyond that, I'm sorry. I got to get on with my life. And encouraging young children to be angry a year later about something like this is abuse. They have better things to do with their time, like learn to read. George Floyd was killed by a police officer. Yes, so are lots of people. Sometimes for good reason. Mr. Floyd was African-American. The officer was white. Literally irrelevant again. But let's harp on it some more. People are protesting because Mr. Floyd should not have died. But notice the juxtaposition. He was black. He was white. Now people are protesting. So of course they're connecting dots that are not connected. They're protesting because a white police officer hurt a black man. That's the message the kids are getting. Many police officers protect us. This officer did not protect George Floyd. That's a true statement. That is, thank you. Thank you. That's actually truthful. But after all this garbage, do you think that's going to sink in? For many years, some police officers have hurt African-Americans. Some police officers have hurt people. (laughs) <laughs> Some police officers have hurt people. Police power is police is force. Tony Timpa got hurt by police officers, several police officers. He was white. They were white. They made fun of him as they were killing him. Most people have never heard of Tony, Tony Timpa. Tony Timpa's story deserves as much attention as George Floyd's, if not more, because Tony Timpa was a disabled man. He wasn't even a criminal. I'm not suggesting that George Floyd deserved to be killed. Certainly not. But I am telling you that if we're talking about innocent people being harmed by police and then mocked, Tony Timpa should have made the news, but he didn't. People need to be safe. Well, yeah, ideally, but I think we've gone overboard with the people need to be safe thing. People want to be safe. People do need to be safe as individuals, but this notion that somehow the government can keep us perfectly safe has gone a little bit far this year. People needed to be treated fairly. Yes, we do. We do need to be treated fairly, but define fairly for me, please because I have a feeling of a different definition than I do. People are protesting to make things better. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're lying. They're not protesting to make things better. They're protesting because they're angry. They're protesting to get revenge. They've said so. They've said as much. They're protesting to get what they call justice. And they won't They won't be peaceful about it until they get justice. They just said the other day that what happened as far as the verdict was not justice. So they're not protesting to make things better because you make things better by making sure that due process continues to work. That means it works for Chauvin as well as for Floyd. And you protest to make sure that something comes out of this in the form of police reform so that you continue to have police who do protect you. Okay. That's not what they're protesting for. Don't pretend. They need African-Americans to feel safe and be treated fairly. They, the protesters, we all need to feel safe or be safe and be treated fairly. Not just African-Americans. We all do. Again, reference Tony Timpa. Now we're going to look at the pyramid of hate. Thanks, ADL. Where the heck are you when it's Jews at the, you know, who are getting beat on by the pyramid of hate? Exactly nowhere. That's where you are. Okay, so you can't see this. It's really tiny. But we have biased attitudes, acts of bias, systemic discrimination, 
You mean like the kind they're doing in the schools where they separate the white kids out and tell the white kids they're oppressors and the black kids they're victims? Like that kind? Bias-motivated violence, like the kind when mostly black perpetrators beat up on Asians in the street for no good reason? You mean like that? Mm -hmm. Or when mostly black perpetrators go into, you know, places in Brooklyn where Jews live and just for no apparent reason try to, you know, attack them with knives, hurting their babies in the process? You mean like that? That kind of bias-motivated violence? And then genocide, the act or intent of deliberately systematically annihilating entire people. You mean like when BLM protesters went to a New York restaurant the other night and said all white people need to get out of New York? You mean like that? I mean, they didn't suggest killing them just yet, but they said all white people should leave. And let's see. Uh, yeah, so I'm just curious what acts of bias are. Non-inclusive language, you mean like when you talk about whiteness and white oppressors and decentering whiteness? Insensitive remarks like that. Microaggressions, bias and belittling jokes, you mean like what's what are white people good for anyway YouTube videos? Cultural appropriation. Could you please stop, you know, driving cars, using technology? Should we go on? Um, social avoidance and or exclusion, name calling, ridicule, bullying, slurs, and epithets. Have you spent any time on Twitter lately as a white person on the receiving end of hate from other people who are not white? Try it sometime. You'll get all of this. But I understand it doesn't count in the pyramid of hate because apparently the pyramid of hate only works when it's white people doing these things and black people on the receiving end of them. Isn't that the case? That's what you're, that's basically what you're teaching these children. You're not teaching them that all people need to feel safe and all people need to be treated fairly and that some cops are not, don't treat some people fairly and that some cops have killed or harmed some people of every race. And this was another case of that. In fact, what Derek Chauvin did, what could have happened to other people because it happened to Tony Timpa. So Derek Chauvin needs to go away and other cops who would behave like Derek Chauvin need to not do that. They need to be found out and removed from the police force. We need to institute some reforms so it doesn't happen to anyone. But guess what? It's not because of a pyramid of hate. It's because of poor training. It's because of personalities who have no business being in the public service. It is because of, you know, ag aggressive tendencies in that individual. It's not because of, of, of some racial discrimination. They are juxtaposing things that are unrelated here. So that's what they're teaching in the Philadelphia schools to very young children. And what this is, is when they take a tragedy, just like Chris said, and they use it as a political weapon. This is absolutely designed to push the narratives that Black Lives Matter, a Marxist organization, wants to push into the schools at the youngest level, with the youngest grades, and it is disgusting. It is disgusting. It is racist. It is a lie. Teachers who are doing this are lying to their students. It's child abuse. Let's just call it what it is. It's child abuse. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. And I hope you will do whatever you can to make sure that the Civic Secures Democracy Act does not pass. It probably will anyway. But you know, put pressure on your governor, or state legislature, et cetera, not to take this grant money. I understand we're in a tough year. I understand that the CARES Act money is probably being withheld from you or sat on because of a variety of reasons. But resist. Resist. It's going to be so tempting. People are going to push you that you don't care about children. You, This money is going to help us make our budget. Our budget is falling short. And if we don't make the budget, we won't be able to teach them all these things. This is not for shoring up your budget. This is not money that you can apply to whatever you want. This is going to be grant money specifically for teaching things like the pyramid of hate. Don't do it. Do whatever you can to get in the way of it. And if you can't, if you don't have a friendly governor and state legislature and state board of education, get your kids out of these classrooms. I cannot stress that enough. This is traumatizing to them. This notion that they are traumatized by the death of George Floyd is ludicrous. Unless they knew him personally, or unless their parents are, you know, raining trauma on top, you know, like, oh my God, I'm so traumatized. That would traumatize the child because mom or dad is traumatized or at least performatively traumatized. But no, this traumatizes them inside their classroom, being made to feel unsafe, being made to feel like they're on the bottom of some pyramid of hate. Mm -mm. No, not okay. 
All right. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll be back with another video soon.